Ayan, live na. Okay, mabuti. Thank you po. So, ibig sabihin, yung nawalang isa, na andun na siya sa Facebook. Opo, opo. Palagay ko. Palagay, oo. Sige. Let's uh, start our... Ganito po i ano ko lang, i-mute ka lang, i-mute ko lang kayo para po, hindi maputol ang ano, ang signal ha. Opo. Ayan. Uh, mag-message lang kayo kung something is wrong or na nawala ako. Sandali. Okay. Seeing in the spirit. So this is the uh, first question that we need to understand. Is it a gift or ability? Kasi pag hindi natin ito na naintindihan, it would prevent us from operating on seeing in the spirit. Actually, most of the books currently available in this subject, they take the view of seeing in the spirit is either a seer anointing or they call it a gift or an impartation. Okay? So, while I do not dispute the fact that the Holy Spirit anoints some people to do certain things and that He gives gifts that are not innate abilities that we possess, nagbibigay po ang Holy Spirit ng gift. Okay? But seeing in the Spirit, I believe, is not a gift. Actually, it is more of an ability. Okay? I explain it to you later. And I do not believe that seeing the Spirit falls into any of these categories. It is not an impartation. It is not a gift. Or rather, an anointing. Because seeing the Spirit is more of an ability. I'll give you an example. Unbeliever. Nakakakita ang mga unbeliever. Nakakita ng demonyo. Di ba? Can you, can you tell me na yung unbeliever na yun, binigyan ni Lord ng gift? Di ba hindi? Oh. I have a story na may isang pastor pumunta sa hospital, pinag yung isang uh, uh, kapatiran. And then after he prayed for the kapatiran, uh, the ka kasi sampung kama yun eh, yung isang kama na may bata. Nag-request yung mother, sabi niya, Pastor po pala kayo, can you pray for my child? Kasi ho siya, hindi na ho natutulog. Kapag inaantok, ganito ginagawa, nakaganyan. Kasi sabi ng bata, every time he, she closes her eyes, he can, she can see demons. 
So, galing na daw sila sa pastor, sa imam, sa pare. pinag na daw, pero walang nangyari. So, sabi niya, can you please pray for my child? Sabi niya gano'n. So, pinag niya. Pero bago siya nag-pray, tinanong niya si Lord. Sabi niya, Lord, ano po ang inyong, ano gusto niyong mangyari sa bata? Sa gift na ibinigay mo sa kanya. So, ang sagot sa kanya ni Lord, close it temporarily. Okay? So, he prayed. Sabi niya, Lord, will you close her spiritual eyes temporarily? Alam niyo nangyari? Sabi nung pastor, Okay, please close your eyes. Sabi niya, Sabi niya, ayoko, ayoko. Sabi niya, ganun. Kasi uh, natatakot siya. Sabi niya, just once. You just try it. Sumunod yung bata. The moment she closed her eyes, sumigaw yung bata. Sabi niya, yay! Wala na akong nakikitang demons. So, so can you, can you tell me na yung bata na yun is, di ba? Di pa naman siya, no? And I know a pastor, yung kanyang apo, si ir yung apo she can see spirits at ang mga kalaro niya mga espiritu mga bata and one day humingi ng damit yung kanyang anak yung kanyang apo kasi sabi niya susuutan ko yung kalaro ko at sabi nung nung pastora, wala ka mang kalaro dito, mag-isa ka lang. Sabi niya, meron. May kalaro ako, hubad nga eh. Oo. So, binigyan niya yung damit. Tapos, tinip, sinilip niya ngayon kung anong gagawin ng bata. Kinagano niya, o pinasinusuot niya yung damit dun sa kalaro. Then, she realized, eh kasi si Er yung lola eh. Si Er din pala yung apo. Ang nakikita niya yung mga wandering spirit. We don't know if that is an evil spirit. I don't know. But yung nakikita ng bata ay ano, mga maliliit na bata. Mga bata din na mga spirito. Until na lumaki yung baby, yung bata, tinuruan nila na to differentiate what is the, the natural and the spiritual. Kasi yung bata cannot recognize kung ano yung spiritual at ano yung natural. Kasi both, she can see the two realms. Okay? So, di ba merong mga manguhula nagpipredict bakit nangyayari? Kasi itong mga manguhula na ito, even though they are unbeliever, they have the ability to see the realm of the spirit. Now, ang tanong, saan ang galing yung ability nila yon? Later, I'll just explain to you kung saan ang galing. When God specifically grant us the ability to do something, it is considered a gift. Di ba? Example, a gift of tongues. Oh. Uh, gift of tongues, nag tayo ay nag, ano, nag, uh, nag speak in tongues, that is a gift. Di ba? Nasa 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now, The gift of tongue is not an innate skill. Hindi ito natin inaral. We are born with that can be developed. Diba? A lot of people get baptized in the Holy Spirit but they never spoke in tongue. Okay? Because speaking in tongues, it is not the Holy Spirit that spoke, that will speak it us. At the role of the Holy Spirit, it will give us the utterance. Kung ano ang sasabihin mo. And you speak by faith. So we refer to it as a gift because it cannot be done except by the power of God. Okay? Another example is the gift of the word of knowledge. Word of knowledge is knowing something na hindi mo alam. Okay? And God gave you a knowledge of something that you don't know. At hindi lang you don't know, it is impossible for you to know. Example, when you're releasing a prophecy and you're telling someone about something. One time we had a, uh, 
member na na demon possess. Nagwawala siya at nagano uh, malakas yung ano yung babae. And then pinuntahan kami ng mga magulang, pinuntahan namin yung bahay nila and then we try to discern kung bakit ganon. So we stay for more than two hours. Wala kami madiscern na may demon spirit or demon possess yung babae. But later, sabi ko, we need to fast and let us ask the Holy Spirit kung ano yung tawag dito, ano yung reason kung bakit siya nagkakaganyan. Okay? So, after the fasting, one of our intercessor binigyan siya ng revelation ko na ang root cause ng kanyang pagiging nagwawala, galit, galit siya, ganun. Sabi niya, alam mo ba, the Lord told me that you were raped by your uncle at tinutukan ka pa ng baril kasi pulis yung uncle. And then you were raped by your lolo. Alam mo nangyari, sumigaw siya at nagkaihi doon sa kinaupuan niya. At ang sabi niya, ano niyo nalaman yon? Ako lang nakakaalam noon. Oh. And that, then afterwards, prayer for healing. And then she got healed. So, that thing is what we call the word of knowledge. Something that is impossible for you to know. But the Holy Spirit revealed it to you in your spirit. A word of knowledge is a supernatural revelation given by the Holy Spirit about a situation you would not otherwise know about. Na imposible yung malaman kasi especially kung ito in the past na. At siya lang nakakaalam. Di ba? That is a word of knowledge. Another example is the ability to play musical instrument. All humans have the ability to play musical instrument. But the ability to play an instrument must be developed through practice. When I was uh, in high school, I tried to learn how to play the guitar. Kaso lang, laging masakit yung ano, mga daliri ko kasi nasusugat siya. And I'm not willing to pay the price. That's why I did not pursue learning to play a, a guitar or a musical instrument. Because abilities are commonly distributed to all mankind, even if they are not equally developed. God has given us the ability. We can develop it. Same true with seeing. If seeing the Spirit is special empowerment from God, or it is a gift that the Holy Spirit only gives to a few people, question, why it is that New Agers and Satanists operate so well in it? Di ba yung mga medium, alam niyo yung medium? Or operating in, in an occult? Oh. Bakit, ano sila? Bakit uh, they can see? Yung mga manguhula, di ba? Bakit nila nagagawa yon? Why? It's not a gift, but it is what? An ability na kanilang ano, na-develop. Okay? Now, Are we to believe that the Holy Spirit distribute this gift to people who do not know Him? Diba? Ibig mo sabihin, kapag yan ay gift, so ibig sabihin, ang Holy Spirit ba nagbibigyan ng gift doon sa mga taong hindi born again at hindi nakakakilala sa Kanya? Of course not. So, the problem with this belief is those with the gift of seeing dispense supernatural revelation to those without the gift for a fee. 
Yan ang nangyayari. Dahil ang tingin niya, it's a gift. Ikaw ay walang gift na ganyan. You pay me. O. Oh. Parang hulaan kita. Parang gano'n. Kaya nga madalas yung mga Christian na nakakakita in the room of the Spirit, ginagawang manguhula ng iba. Sasabihin lang, may, uh, Brad, may nawala kami sa bahay. Pwede mong makita mo sa realm of the Spirit kung sinong lagnakaw. Oh. Madalas, ginagawa silang manguhula. Di ba? Prophetically, gifted people have taken to dispensing the revelation they received through vision and exchange for donations and accolades from their supporters. Kaya ito yung nagiging wrong motive. Pag-gift ang pagkaintindi lang nila doon sa seeing in the spirit. Oh, parang sabi nila, ako lang meron ganyan. So, I can give it to you, you know, for a fee or donations. Sometimes ginagawa nila itong hanap buhay eh. May mga Christians na nag-ooperate sa prophetic na ginagamit nila ito as ano as a source of income or an exchange for something okay so this is how the new agers community operates kaya pumunta ka sa Kiapo di ba may mga manghuhula doon karamihan doon ng mga nanghuhula is what <laughs> magugulat ka bakit accurate Di ba? Oh. Because one way or another, they were able to develop that ability to see in the realm of the Spirit. Okay? The problem is that, that God is not speaking. Ang problema po ay hindi yung ang Diyos ay hindi nagsasalita. Because God is always speaking to us. The problem is that He is a spirit who is speak in a spiritual language that is received by our spirit. And many of us have not developed our ability to, per to perceive what He is saying. Tandaan niyo po, God is a spirit. And the only way He communicates to us is through our spirit. Question. Can God speak in an audible voice? Yes. In the Old Testament, He spoke to Samuel in an audible voice. Diba? I think three times. Diba? But later, it's not an audible voice. Bakit? Siguro, one of the reason is at the time Samuel is still young and new in the realm of the spirit hindi pa niya ito alam yung prophecy so di ba he has to call the attention of Samuel in an audible voice oh di ba nung tinatawag siya pumunta siya kay ano eh kay Eli at sabi niya tandang Eli tinatawag mo ba ako sa niya no hindi ako tumatawag sa iyo and then another sabi niya oh pangatlong beses sabi niya pag pag narinig mo uli yan sabihin mo lord here am i here i am i'm listening so kaya nung una you might able to hear the voice of god in an audible voice at napansin niyo hindi na naulit in my experience i heard the voice of god an audible voice of god once lang. Siguro mga one month old akong Christian, I heard his voice calling me. But after that, hindi ko na, na narinig ulit yun. Because I understand that God is a spirit and He speak in a spiritual language. And when He speak in a spiritual language, it is received by our spirit. And most of us have our spiritual senses dulled by sensory input from the physical world. Kaya nga, madalas, nire-require ni Lord na mag-fasting ka. Bakit? Kasi pag nag-fasting ka, hindi ka kumain, your physical body is weak, but your spiritual senses are what? Strong. Because of the physical sensory input, the noises of the world 
it's hard for us to hear or to recognize the input from the spiritual world. The key to perceiving and understanding spiritual communication is to have our spiritual senses trained and refocused. That's why it is advised that you go to a frequent fasting. It's good to have a time of fasting because it's one way that your spiritual senses would be developed and more sensitive. Most people receive vision from God on a regular basis, but they're either not aware that they are seeing it from Him. Ito yung isang klaseng si ear na nakakakita siya pero ayaw niyang tanggapin yung nakikita niya ay galing sa Lord. They always make an excuse as sasabihin niya, ay sa akin lang yon, or it's my own imagination. Then later, nangyari yung nakita niya at pangit yung nakita niya at nangyari. Tsaka siya may nagre-regret. Kasi sometimes the Lord will show you the negative things. For what purpose? So that you can pray and that negative things ay hindi mangyari. They attribute it to their own imagination or they are not paying attention at all to the visual images He sent them. Kasi si Lord, magsisend siya ng mga visual images in our spirit. You know the mind? Our mind is just like a hard drive. Sa computer may hard drive. Ang tawag dyan is storage. Yung brain natin actually is the storage of the revelation of God. Okay? Kaya yung Word of God na memorize natin, ini-store natin sa ating mind. And when the Lord quicken the Word of God in our mind, it becomes a revelation in our spirit. So anyone can receive their own revelation directly from God. Di ba sabi niya, the Holy Spirit will guide you. Di ba? The Holy Spirit will speak to you. Di ba? And some of you know, you don't need a teacher to teach you because it's the Holy Spirit is enough to teach you. Ang ibig niyang sabihin, it's the Holy Spirit that is enough, enough, is enough to tell us if what we are receiving is right or wrong. Or what we are receiving is coming from the Lord or coming from the kingdom of darkness. In our busy culture, actually it takes time concentration and a bit of practice to learn how to receive, interpret, and apply spiritual revelation. Remember this process. You have to master the ability to receive. The next, if you know, if you, if you master the, the ability to receive, next is the interpretation. Remember, God is speaking in a spiritual language. You cannot interpret the word of God, the revelation that you receive, based lang doon sa iyong frame of reference or frame of mind. And the third one is to apply the spiritual revelation. And many people find it more convenient to let others do it for them. Kaya sabi nila, hulaan mo na lang ako. <laughs> Kaya yung iba nga, oh, prophesy to me. Oh. But the truth is, each one of us were given an auction, a measure of the Spirit of God. And all of us can hear and can see. Unlike in the Old Testament, there are only what? Uh, only the prophets can see or the seers can see God. Diba? But in the New Testament, because of what Christ did to us, He opens us the realm of the Spirit. A few people are born with a very sharp ability to see what is going on in the spiritual world. Alam nyo kung ano ang dahilan? Kung bakit yung mga unbeliever? Or iba sa inyo, unbeliever pa, 
nakakakita na ng multo, nakakakita ng demonyo. And then, nung na-born again kayo, ang nakita nyo na ngayon ay langit at mga anghel at yung mga uh, spirit in the realm of the kingdom of God. Meron kami mga CM dito sa Mindanao. Ang kanila pong uh, level ng seeing is 24 by 7. And they can see the physical realm superimposed with the realm of the spirit. They can see demons na nakasakay dun sa mga tao. You know. Kaya pag kami pumupunta sa mga training namin at Pagdating sa hotel, I have to teach them how to close their eyes temporarily. To shut. Kasi nga, hindi sila makatulog. Kasi pagdating sa room ko, ano-ano nakikita nila. Sabi ko, alam nyo, you can temporarily shut it off. You can ask the Holy Spirit to shut it off. Kasi tandaan nyo, hindi lahat ng nakikita nyo in the realm of the Spirit ay you have to deal with it. Kasi magiging demon hunter ka. Hmm. Kaya sabi ko, that is my advantage to you. Dahil hindi ko nakikita yan, I can sleep very sound compared sa inyo. Kaya sila laging puyat. But later, naintindihan nila, na practice nila kung paano nila i-close temporarily. Okay? Yung kanilang seeing. The problem of these people is that they must learn to shut out the things they see in the spiritual world or they have difficulty functioning in the physical one. So yun ang magiging problema. Tayo na hindi nakakakita sa realm of the spirit, we have difficulty functioning in the realm of the spirit. But those people who are, they have a sharp ability to see in the realm of the spirit They have difficulty functioning in the physical. Okay? Karamihan yan may trust issue. Alam niyo bakit? Nakikita niya eh. Marami siya nakikita. But for most people, they are not tuned into the spiritual world. They must learn how to shut out the physical world. Yun naman yung opposite. Kapag laging nakafocus ka, sa physical world, hirap ka na makita ang spiritual world. Kaya di ba ang paglinggo, worship kayo, a lot of people are already crying because they can feel and see the very presence of God. And a lot of people, nakaganyan lang, They're just wondering what's going on. Why these people are crying? Why these people are shouting for joy? Pero ikaw, wala lang. Bakit? Diba? Why? Because your senses are only focused on the physical realm. Kaya ang daming mga Kristiyano, umaate ng service, Sunday service, hindi sila nabibless. Hindi nila nararanasan yung presence ni Lord. Bakit? Sarado yung kanilang ano, spiritual senses. Alam nyo ba karamihan ng mga nakakakita ay yung kanilang mga forefathers are involved sa cult and occult. Yung mga kakilala ko mga seers, uh, pag na-trace nila yung roots nila, na found out nila may mga connection ito deep into cult and occult. So, parang napapasa sa kanila yung ability to see in the realm of the spirit. It's not about being a chosen vessel any longer because all of us can see and can hear. Why? Because all of us are created in the very image of God. You are created in the image of God. Once you come into the family of God, 
Your spiritual God-given DNA is activated. Yung DNA ni Lord sa iyo, na-activate yun. Okay? Example, John 3.7. Di ba sabi niya? The word born from above. Unless a man be born again. You know, the word born again in Greek, it means born from above. Other meaning is to be reborn from the heavenly realms or to be reborn from the spirit. Yan yung ibig sabihin ng born again. Look at the human DNA. This is a picture of a human DNA. DNA is, ang haba nito, deo, deoxyribonucleic acid. It is a long molecule that contains our unique genetic code. Each one of us has a unique genetic code. Yung DNA. Iba-iba uh, yung ating DNA. Okay. It's just like a recipe book. It holds the instruction for making all the proteins in our bodies. Okay? So, yung DNA natin ay iba-iba. Okay? According to science, yung DNA ng tatay, hindi 100% na ipapasa sa anak. Ano lang siya? At least 50% lang ng DNA niya ang naipapasa niya dun sa anak niya. Then mix na yun. But, sa apo niya, 100% ng DNA ng lolo or ng lola or the other side, naipapasa yung ano, 100% na ano, DNA. Kaya tandaan nyo, ang mga lolo o lola, they tend to spoil their apo. Why? Because the DNA that, that they have is 100% na ililipat doon sa kanilang apo. And every time they look at their apo, anong sinasabi nila? Ay, ang cute-cute mo. Kamuha ka ng lolo mo o ng lola mo. Di ba? Same true with God's DNA. When we got born again, the DNA of God was transferred to us. That's why, ano ang, sabi, ang kasabihan? Like father, like son. Kaya ang sabi ng Bible, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become sons of God. If you are a son, it means you look like your father. In 1 Peter 1.23, anong sabi niya? Since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but imperishable, Through the living and abiding word. The word seed in Hebrew is sperma. Diyan natin nakuha yung word sa Ingles na sperm. 1 John 3.9 No one born of God makes a practice of sinning. For God's seed abides in him. And he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. See, you have the seed of God. Now, if you have the DNA of God in you, It is not impossible to see the realm of the Spirit. That's the very reason why you got born again. To see Him. So seeing is an ability. Genesis 1, 29 to 31. Look at this one. And God said, See, I have given you every herd that yields seed which is on the face of all the earth. And every tree those fruit yield seed. To you it shall be for food, also to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on earth, in which there is life. I have given every green herb for food, and it was so. Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. God saw. God see. In other words, the Creator is a seer. He can see. Right? He created you and me in His image to be seers too. And one of the first things He told human to do is see. Diba sabi niya sa Genesis, see. 
And Genesis 1.28, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion. So He created you to see, not only in the natural realm, but also to see in the spiritual realm. This was made possible in part by God's grace and the activation of the human race to see in both the temporal and the spiritual realm. Because remember, there are two realms. We are a spirit being clothed in a physical body. We are only the created being of God that we can see the natural or can live in the natural realm. At the same time, we can live in the realm of the spirit. Remember in Ephesians chapter 2, sabi niya, you are seated with Christ in the heavenly realm. So, even though you are here on earth, in the spirit, you are seated with Christ. So, tayo lang yung create, creation ni Lord has the ability to live in the physical realm, but at the same time in the spirit realm. The moment your body died, you are now disqualified to live here on earth. You will become an Elohim. You will live in the realm of the spirit. Okay? So the next thing that the Lord instructed us to do was to see. And that is your spiritual DNA. To see. You are created to be a seer and to have intimacy and communion with God. You cannot have communion with God unless you can see Him. Anong klaseng relasyon meron tayo sa Diyos kung hindi man natin siya makikita? Hindi natin siya maririnig. So, anong klaseng relasyon yan? So, if we cannot see Him, we cannot hear, hear Him, what will happen? We're just having only religion. In Genesis chapter 1, God, were, God saw was mentioned six times. And God sees this seven time that man is Good. And the seventh time prophetically means completion, perfection, or rest. And God created the whole universe so that you would interact with Him. That is the Edenic vision of God. He wants us to interact with Him. He wants us to be with Him. Mga kapatid, being born again is not only going to heaven when we die. You know, religion teaches us that you need to receive Jesus Christ para pag namatay ka sa langit ka pupunta. That's not the very reason why God died on the cross of Calvary. Added lang yun. The very reason He came is to restore us back to Him so we can have relationship with Him. And part of the relationship is about seeing and hearing God. And one of the ways we can do this is to see with our spirit, not just seeing with our natural eyes. Nanawa niyo po? Kaya pag sinasabi natin na, oh, ang born again ay hindi, ano, hindi really yun. Kung hindi relationship. And how can you have a relationship with a person if you cannot see and you cannot hear that person? Sige nga. Because God is a spirit. 1 Corinthians 15.50 Sabi niya, Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit in corruption. So we cannot perceive the kingdom of God with our carnal minds. We cannot see, taste, touch, smell, or inherit the kingdom of God with our minds and soul. Hindi po pwede nagamitin mo ang isip mo, yung kaluluwa mo, yung taste and see. Oh. Di ba? Like for example, 
some of you ay uh, hindi pa nakakain siguro ng durian. The first time in Mindanao, 2010, they offered me durian. Eh, ang naghain sa akin isang elder ng isang simbahan, bisita ako, ay nahihiyaman akong tanggihan. Eh, sabi ko sa kanya, ma'am, first time ko makakita ng durian, ang kinakain ko lang sa durian, yung candy. Ang sabi niya sa akin, Pastor, ano lang yan, psychological lang yan. Sabi ko, bakit po? Kasi yung taste, at saka smell, 70% of our taste is smell. So, when you eat, Don't focus on the smell. You focus on the taste. Oh, sabi ko, sige nga, ma'am, tikman ko nga. Uy, sabi ko, masarap pala. So, hindi ko pinokus yung aking senses doon sa, sa smell. But sa taste. Maya, may kwentuhan kami. Naubos ko isang buong durian. Sabi ko, ma'am, meron pa ho. Tawa siya eh. Kaya dito, ang tawag nila, ang durian, is what? It smell like hell, but taste like heaven. So kahit na explain ko sa inyo kung ano ang durian, until you taste it, until you experience it, you can see, wow, taste and see that the Lord is good. Diba? Diba? It is only through our spirit man that we can access the grace and the anointing of Jesus Christ. Not our mind, not our soul, but our spirit. 1 John 2.16, anong sabi niya? For all that is in the world, what is in the world? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. These are operating in the soul and in the body. It's not the, of the Father, but is of the world. So God is the Spirit, and the Holy Spirit communicates and speaks to us spirit to spirit. Other called it heart to heart. So, ganyan ang Diyos, because God is the Spirit. So, nagko-communicate siya sa ating ano, mga Espiritu. So, to enter into the kingdom, you enter by your what? Recreated Spirit. Sabi niya, unless a man be born again, he cannot enter. He cannot see. And then, unless a man is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter. John 4.24, anong sabi ron? God is in spirit. And those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. So the Lord created. It is important to see God to worship Him. Why? Matthew 5. Di ba? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Hmm. hindi mo makikita ang Diyos, hindi mo lang siya makikita kung patay ka na. Because God wants us for you to see Him even now. So when your spiritual DNA is activated, you will not only see with your eyes, but you will also discern with your spiritual senses as well. If in the physical, meron tayong taste, see, smell, touch and hear the same thing din sa spirit realm yung spirit mo meron din siyang ability to taste to see to smell to touch and to hear sa akin ang malakas is smell palibas ang malaking butas ng ilong ko kahit no ko'y unbeliever pa i can smell the presence of a demon Ephesians 1, ano ang sabi niya? I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention you in my prayers that God, O Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Next, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of His calling, what are the riches of the glory of His inheritance and the same. You cannot know the inheritance that God has given you. You cannot know the riches of the glory na ibinigay sa iyo ni Lord if your eyes is closed. If your spiritual eyes 
is close, you cannot understand. Your true nature, if God is a true God, di ba? Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we have that same nature, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Now, the word seer, you can find it in the Old Testament. The common term used today is to refer to people who see in the spirit is the word seer. So, commonly we call them seer if they can see the realm of the spirit. In 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 9, noon, sabi niya, formerly in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, he spoke thus, Come, let us go to the seer. For he who is now called a prophet was formerly called a seer. Nung unang panahon, ang tawag nila doon sa mga propeta ay seer. Okay? And this passage simply states that the ancient custom was to call a prophet a seer. Okay? So the use of the word indicates that seer is not a special position or title. Okay? So it's simply a term that was once used interchange, interchangeably for a word prophet. So sa Old Testament, napagpapalit yung salitang seer at saka prophet. Mami, I mentioned to you the Hebrew word that they use. Magkaiba po yung kanilang Hebrew word na ginamit. 2 Kings 17.13, ano sabi nun? Yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah, Judah by all the prophets. The Hebrew words that they use is Nabe. And by all the seers, Chosi. Okay? So magkaiba yung Hebrew word na ginamit. But the terminology is being used to describe the one that can see God and hear God. So in the beginning, it was God's desire to communicate with mankind personally. That is the Edenic vision. Look at Genesis chapter 3. Di ba ang description doon ng Hebrew Bible is this. God walked in the cool of the day. Adam and Eve, I mean, walk in the cool of the day. That's the way they describe the intimacy between God and man. And the very reason why God created man is He wants to communicate and to have relationship personally with man. Okay? He doesn't want religion. He wants relationship. Diba? It was never His desire to speak to us through someone else. From the very beginning, God never intend to speak to a prophet. Nagkaroon ng propeta sa Old Testament because people are not listening to God anymore. That's why he raises a prophet to speak for him. But in reality, in Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, what he wants is to speak to us personally. At nung naborn again tayo, nung namatay si Christ sa Cruz ng Kalbari, at nung born again tayo, the DNA of God was transferred to us, na-restored yung ating new creation. Para tayong si Adan at Eva nung hindi pa nagkakasala. So the use of prophets to speak to man was not God's idea. Alam niyo ba yun? It was not God's idea. God made it because the people of Israel were afraid to commune with Him in person. Takot eh. Remember that in Exodus chapter 20? And they said to Moses, sabi ni Lord, o papuntay, palapitin mo sa akin yung mga Israelita. I want to talk to them. Ano ang sabi ng mga Israelita? Sabi niya, you speak to us and we will listen. But don't let God speak directly to us or we will die. Natakot sila kasi ano mang hayop na uh, lumapit doon sa bundok, because of the holiness of God, namamatay. And because of that, natakot sila. See? But Moses... Ang naririnig nila, lightning and thunderings. But Moses, he is there for 40 days and 40 nights. He can see audibly 
the voice of God. Diba? Kaya anong ginawa ni Lord? Nag-raise siya ng prophet para lang kausapin ang mga tao. Our continuation of the practice of relying on a certain anointed people to heal God for us must come to an end. I'm not saying na hindi tayo dapat makinig sa propeta. Look at the 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the gifts of the Spirit. Look at the uh, Romans chapter uh, 14. Uh, look at the Galatians. The common gift na binabanggit doon is prophecy. Magkaiba yung prophet tsaka prophecy. There are people who are called in the office of the prophet. But all of us who are born again, we can prophesy. Why? We can hear the voice of God. So God's original design is to face-to-face, spirit-to-spirit communication between two beings that are in love. Right? If two persons are in love, hindi pwede hindi sila mag-usap. If we were ever going to grow into mature sons and daughters of God, we need to communicate with God. So seeing the Spirit may actually be considered more of an ability than a gift. Because every one of us has been given by God that ability to see and to hear. Although the Bible refers to many different things as gift, there is no mention in the Scripture of a gift of seeing in the Spirit. Pansinin niyo po, wala sa Bible yung salitang gift of seeing. Because it's clear that, the, that seeing in the Spirit is more of an ability. So many of the true spiritual gifts seems to require one or more of our abilities to be developed before they can be used. Alam niyo ba yun? Yung gift, yung spiritual gifts, require one or more of our abilities. You cannot prophesy, mga kapatid, unless you're, you can see in the Spirit. You cannot operate in uh, gifts of healing or discerning of the Spirit if you cannot see and if you cannot hear God, if your eyes is closed. Example, the discerning of a spirit mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. In operating the gift of discerning of a spirit by seeing them, you must develop the ability to see in the spirit before you can operate in that gift. Kasi kung you are not operating in seeing, hindi yan discerning of spirit, suspicion yan. While the control of a spiritual gift is subject to the operation of the Holy Spirit, the development of the ability is controlled by the individual. Example, playing of a guitar. Diba? It's up to you to practice it. Oh. A, tawag uh, dito, merong isang reporter in interview si, ano, Sino yun? John Lisaka. You know, kilala niyo si John Lisaka. John Lisaka, eh, may tama ba yung pronunciation ko? Magaling po siyang mag-violin. Mag-play ng violin. Tinanong siya, sabi niya, John, bakit violin ang iyong ginagamit? Ang iyong nakahiligan na i-play na instrument? Bakit hindi keyboard? Alam mo sagot niya? Brad, kapag keyboard, ang laki-laki niyan, hindi ko mailagayan dito sa aking balikat. <laughs> Abilities are honed and perfected through practice. And they lie undeveloped when we ignore it. So, pag inignore mo yan, hindi yan madidevelop. The fact some, someone does not function well in a certain ability doesn't mean the ability isn't there. 
actually the ability to see in the realm of the spirit is in us because the DNA of God is already in us. Hindi lang natin napapractice. Every morning when you go to prayer, close your eyes and listen. Maririnig mo siya. Kaso lang busy tayo. If we never develop our ability to see in the spirit, the operation of the gift of discerning of spirit or the word of knowledge can be hindered. You cannot operate in these two gifts if you cannot see in the spirit. Pero alam nyo ba, karamihan ng mga believers, hindi seeing in the spirit ang unang na-activate. Alam nyo kung ano? Yung feeling, yung touch. Diba, kuminsan sabi nyo, uy, may kutub ako. Oh, diba, sa Tagalog, in the natural noon, parang kinutuban ako. Oh, may pakiramdam ako na ganito. Karamihan ng mga Christians, nag operate on feeling. And then, akala nila, hindi sila nakaka-receive sa spiritual realm. Yes, nakaka-receive sila. Di lang nila nare-recognize na yung nararamdaman nila, yun na yun. Hebrews 5.14, anong sabi niya? But solid food belongs to those who are full age. That is those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. See? You need to use it. You need to exercise it. You need to practice it. Senses exercise. So seeing in the spirit, mga kapatid, hindi lang yung seeing. That is a misconception. Akala nila, porque wala silang nakikita, hindi na sila nakikita in the spirit. Remember, there are still five senses. We have five senses in the spirit na pwede mong gamitin. We can learn to see in the spirit more accurately by spending time focusing our mind on the unseen world. Yan yung key. You focus. Kaya tayo pinagpipray eh. Because when you pray, when you do fasting, you focus on the unseen world. And seeing in the Spirit is not a matter of gifting or anointing, but a matter of focus and practice. Of course, di ba? practice makes perfect. So at the start, magkakamali ka. But it doesn't prevent you from what? operating on that gift. Okay? So God is a relational being and it is impossible to have a meaningful relationship with Him if you won't devote the time needed to develop it. You cannot have that relationship with Him spirit to spirit, heart to heart, kung ano, hindi tayo mag ano, mag devote ng time to develop warnings. Paalala po, not all Christians are going to welcome your discussions about seeing things in the spiritual world. Meron kami experience, uh, I think in Midsayap, may isang simbahan doon, kaibigan ko yung pastor, uh, we did a training And I mentioned ko yung seeing in the spirit. And then, nagtanong yung pastor, totoo pala yan, pastor, na nakikita yung spirit realm. Siguro e, naman. Kasi, pastor, meron kong member dito, worship leader ko, nakakikita sa realm of the spirit. Every Sunday, may nakikita siyang angel. Pinipigil lang mo magsalita. Huwag na lang ikukwento. <laughs> Kasi ang una, ang tingin niya, yun ang perception niya. Kaya yung worship leader niya, you know, na ang feeling niya ay sometimes tuloy pinaniniwala niya yung ano, yung sinasabi ng pastor niya na ganun siya. O, kung ano-ano nakikita niya spiritual word. Pero may testimony, totoo naman ang nangyayari. Oh, kaso lang hindi nila maipaliwanag. So, if you can see in the realm of the Spirit, wag ko kayo basta magkukwento niyan sa iba. 
Kasi kahit pa pastor yan, hindi lahat ng pastor can embrace this kind of teaching. So, ano lang, dandahan lang. Especially kung you are not the pastor of the church and you cannot see, uh, they cannot see the realm of the spirit, hindi ka naman pwedeng magmalaki. Eh bakit sila, pastor pa man din, walang makita in the realm of the spirit? Actually, may nakikita yan. Hindi lang nila nare-recognize na yung naririnig nila, nararamdaman nila, is already seeing in the spirit na. So, mag-ingat po kayo. Huwag niyong basta magkukwento. Okay? Okay lang magkwento kayo, mag-sharing kayo doon sa mga the same wavelength nyo. Okay? Second, many Christians believe that anyone who claims to see things in the spirit is deceived. Oh, yan ang problema. <laughs> May mga paniniwala na ganun that if you can see things in the realm of the spirit, you are deceived. Para lang daw yan sa mga Uh, new Ager oh, para lang doon sa mga sumasamba sa demonyo oh. number three if the leaders of a church did not find out about your experiences you may be asked not to attend their church any longer may ganyan akong experience nagkukwento sa akin hindi na siya pinaattend ng church nung nalaman nila nung pastor na may nakikita siya in the realm of the spirit We were in Maitum Sarangani. We were teaching about this. And then, sabi ng pastor, Pastor, on the way naman kayo, dadaanan niyo yung bahay at simbahan namin. Pwede ho bang dumaan kayo at pakitingnan naman yung aking simbahan? The reason is, yung aking asawa laging may sakit. Second, every time I preach on Sunday, Pagkatapos ko mag-preach ng Sunday, the whole Monday ako nakahiga. Latang-lata ako at pagod na pagod. Ah, sabi ko, sige, Pastor, puntahan natin yung simbahan nyo. Kasama ko yung si ear Sabi ko, ano nakikita mo? Sabi niya, Pastor, dito ho sa harapan ninyo, meron ho ditong nitso. May nakalibing ho dito dati. Biglang nagulat yung pastor. Paano mo nalaman? Nung nabili namin yung lupa na ito, merong nitso dyan sa, sa harapan. Tinanggal lang namin. Pero sabi ko, kapatid, that's the spirit of death. So, what we did, we pray. After that we pray, alam mo nangyari? We close the gates. The following Sunday, nag-text sa akin yung uh, pastor. Sabi niya, pastor, wala na yung ano yung nararamdaman ko na pagod na pagod at yung misis ko gumaling na yung kanyang sakit doon naman sa isang simbahan we went sabi ko doon sa si ear sabi ko ano nakikita mo dito sa simbahan sabi niya pastor may angel ho sa stage kaso lang yung angel tulog ho? sabi ko grabe naman yung angel na yan tulog walang ginagawa kasi pastor, merong asher, tatlo, ando sa pintuan. Tatlong demonyo ang asher nila. I was surprised. Then tinanong ko yung pastor. Sabi ko, pastor, ano bang original, sino yung occupants nitong simbahan ninyo dati? Sabi niya, dating simbahan ito ng iglesia ni Kristo. Tapos sabi ko naman, okay. And then sabi niya, Pastor, ako nga, isang bulati na lang, hindi po may perma. Payat na payat na mamamatay na. At alam mo nangyari, yung ibang mga members niya, basta na lang umalis sa kanyang simbahan at hindi na umakin. So, after the seminar, we pray and we close the gates. Sabi namin, hindi po pwedeng magstay ito mga demonic spirit na ito sa lugar na ito. This is a holy place. This is where we worship God. You know, after two Sundays, nagulat yung ano, pastor. Without inviting the form, the the previous members, nagbalikan sila. See, so it's very important that you seek because you can use it in your practice of redeeming the land. 
try to find a group of believers who are familiar with these things, mature saints who will listen to your stories without condemnation. You don't need to become perfect bago kayo mag-operate dito. Okay lang na magkamali. Okay? Dahil hindi pa naman tayo perfect to. Pero, the only way you can perfect seeing in the Spirit or developing and honing this ability is you need to practice it. Huwag mong hintayin na maging perfect. Okay lang na magkamali. That's why sa ating mga every Friday submission, we encourage those who, are, who can see in the realm of the Spirit, speak something, what they saw in the Spirit. The only legitimate motive for seeking spiritual experiences is a desire to grow in Christ-likeness and love for others. Yun po ang ating you know, motive. Wala nang iba. We want to grow more. We want to communicate with God. Sabi ng 1 Corinthians 13, 1 and 2, Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become a sounding brass or clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. So, a person whose heart has been pure by the refiner's fire has little reason to worry about Satan gaining influence over them. If your heart is filled with the love of the Father, do not worry na ikaw ay madisim. Because the Holy Spirit that is inside of you is enough to teach you. Di ba? These people are the best candidates to have their spiritual eyes open further. They will take what the Lord reveals, use it, not for themselves, but to bless others and to bring glory to God just as this Jesus did. Now, look, look at Luke 8 verse 10. Anong sabi ni Jesus? To you, it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to the rest, it is given in parables that seeing they may not see, and hearing, they may not understand. Anong ibig sabihin ng Panginoon? I believe when Jesus was here on earth, at kasama niya ang mga disciple, ang mga tao, o yung mga disciple, ay ano, sila lang ang nakakakita. Di ba? To you, it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to the rest, it is given in parables. I'm not saying bukas na bukas yung mata nila. At least they can see and they can hear. Things of great value hidden in the spiritual realm. Yung may mahal mahalagang bagay, may value na bagay, ay nakatago doon sa spiritual realm. And God want us to discover it. For nothing is secret that will not be revealed, nor anything hidden that will not be known and to come to light. Therefore, take heed how you hear. See? The Lord is encouraging us to hear. Diba? Jesus is talking about spiritual senses here. Not only eyes, not only their ears, but their taste, their smell, feeling, okay, touch. The word known in Luke 8.17 is the Greek word ginosko. It means to have a supernatural revelation of something or to stand to understand a spiritual principle within your spirit. That is what it means by to know. To know is to receive a supernatural revelation. 
And remember, the only way to receive the revelation, the supernatural revelation, is you receive it with your spiritual senses. So if you're spiritually blind and deaf, how can you see? How can you hear? This is what the ability to see, to hear, to smell, to taste, to touch, and understand things from the spiritual realm is all about. In Luke 8.18, Jesus when tells us, Take heed how you hear. Take heed how you hear. Anong ibig niyang sabihin? Nakadepende sa ating ano, pakikinig. Because He requires us to obey. Tama? And the only way you can receive the blessing is what? You listen and you obey. Read Deuteronomy chapter 28. The blessing of God that is intended for all of us can only come when we hear His voice and obey. And this is the problem. How can you obey God if you cannot hear? Right? It's not just about reading the Bible. I'm not saying na masama agbasa ng Bible. But when you read the Bible, you should hear it. You should hear the voice of God speaking to you. Because if you cannot hear the voice of God speaking to you through the word of God, you're just reading like an ordinary book. Look at Genesis 2, 8 to 15. Diba? Sabi niya, The Lord God planted a garden in the eastward in Eden, and He put the man whom He had formed, and out of the ground the Lord made every tree grow. Diba? Naglagay siyang dalawang tree, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Okay? Next. Then the Lord took the man and put him in the garden. And then sabi niya, you may surely eat of the every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. That was the uh, restriction na ibinigay sa kanila, restraint na ibinigay ni Lord kay Adam and Eve. You can eat all the fruit of the trees inside the garden except this one. Okay? So, in chapter 3, anong ginawa nila? Kinain nila. At ang sabi ng Bible, the eyes of both of them were open. And they knew that they were naked and they saw, they sold fig leaves together and made themselves covering. Look at the statement. What happened in the garden? Before Adam and Eve ate before the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they seen everything with the eyes of their heart. Tama? They can hear God. They can see God. Because their spiritual senses is what? Active. Tama? And the moment they eat the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, ano sabi ron? Their eyes were open. They can also see the love of God, of the Father for them. Okay? Their relationship with each, uh, which, with each other was lived through the seeing of their heart. It's seeing their heart. That's how they operate. Okay? They were blind to the concept of good and evil and judgment. He don't have any idea of it. Because the plan of God for man is to operate in love. Ang alam lang ni Adan at Eva magmahalan. Wala silang idea ko ano ang mabuti, ko ano masama, ko ano acceptable at hindi acceptable. Now, what was the temptation in the garden? Di ba sabi nung serpent? Sabi niya, this is the summary. The serpent is saying God is doing bad to you. Kasi parang mayroong itinatago sa inyo ang Diyos. Bakit ayaw ng Diyos ipakain sa inyo itong tree of the knowledge good and evil? Hindi nyo ba alam nagiging kayong magkakaroon kayo ng knowledge? Magiging katulad kayo ng Diyos? Hmm. It seems the devil is trying to tell Eve that God is withholding something good to them. 
He knows if you eat this fruit, you will be like him. So yan yung temptation ni ano ni ni Nakash. You know, the, the serpent there is in Hebrew means Nakash. So Adam and Eve forgot that they are created they were created in the image and the likeness of God. And then sinabi sa kanila ni Satan, pag kinain niya ito, you will become like God. That's why. Matalino ito. You cannot um, play around with the devil. He knew the Bible. Kaya nga may isang mama dito sa Dabaw eh. Nag-testify siya na meron daw anghel na dumalaw sa kanya sa Mount Apu. At ang sabi daw nung anghel na yon, He is the appointed son of God. Alam na natin kung sinong anghel yon. He is not the loyal sons of God, but this guy is a fallen son of God. Why fallen? Because mali yung kanyang revelation. So after taking the fruit, sabi niya their eyes were open. Ngayon, ito ang tanong. What eyes were open? Di ba? Nung nilika ng Diyos si Adan at Eva, they can see God, they can hear God. It was not the physical eyes of the man were open because they have been created with full physical aptitude. They can see the creation of God. Tama? Di ba sila bulag? Hindi rin yung kanilang spiritual eyes. Bakit? They can see God eh. The eyes that were open, mga kapatid, were the eyes of the mind. To understand the concept of good and evil. Kaya ang pagbinasa nyo sa chapter 3, sabi niya, oh chapter 4 ata, sabi niya na, men become like one of us. Oh, that understand the concept of good and evil. So from the very beginning, God does have an ask to know about good and evil. Kaya anong unang napansin nila? Before they perceive with eyes of the heart, they saw love, acceptance, joy and joy and freedom. What happens nung nabuksan yung kanilang spiritual eyes, ay yung kanilang eyes of the mind, they now understand the concept of good and evil. What is acceptable and what is not acceptable. Napansin niyo? Oh. Ano nung napansin nila? Hubad sila. Eh, dati naman silang hubad. Dati silang hubad. They got the knowledge of what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. One time in Burakay, nung hindi pa yung sikat, may mga pumunta dyan ng mga French nationals at naligo sa Burakay. Tapos dumating ang maraming pulis. Alam niyo bakit? Yung mga French National, naligo ng hubot-hubad. Dagsaan yung mga tao, nanunood. Mm. Eh sa bansa nila, yung maligo ng hubot-hubad is acceptable. Mm. Kaya sabi ng mga pulis doon sa mga French National, sorry, sir, ma'am, that culture is not acceptable in the Philippines. You have to wear one piece or two piece. Uh, kung maliligo kayo sa, ano, sa, sa dagat. You see, because our eyes has been open. We know the concept of good and we know the concept of evil. That's why in Ephesians 1.18, ang prayer ni Paul that the eyes of the heart would be open. Yan yung prayer ni Paul na yung mata ng ating mga puso ay mabuksan. That's why, ang born again experience is what? Unless a man be born again, he cannot see. This is the problem. Now that you are born again, 
our spiritual eyes is already open. Tama? But the problem is, the eyes of our mind is still open. Uh, yun ang problema natin. And that's why we have, it's hard for us to distinguish which is which. Oh. The eyes of the heart was shut down to the knowledge of good and evil. Nung si Adan at Eva, kinain yung prutas, the eyes of their heart was closed. And the eyes of their mind open. Kaya pagdating sa New Testament, ang prayer ni Paul, mabuksan yung ating mga spiritual eyes. Because wisdom and revelation only come from the tree of life. And God can only be known through wisdom and revelation which come from Him. You cannot, only, you, cannot, you cannot know God by just reading the Bible. You need to have a revelation. Kinakailangan mag-jump out yung word of God na yan sa mga pages ng Bible. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng revelation. So what does the enemy of our soul want to do? He wants to stop us from having a relationship with God. That's why He wants to stop us from seeing and hearing. If our God's purpose for us is to see, the enemy diligently work to make us spiritually blind and deaf. Yun ang ginagawa ng kaaway. Kaya marami na born again na, pero they're still deaf. They're still blind. That's why anong sabi ni Lord, the, uh, the Spirit of the Lord is, an, is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel. And so, to set free those who are captives, do, do are, uh, uh, those who are in prison, to set liberty. It's not the people who are physically in prison, but he's referring to those who are spiritually blind or deaf. The enemy hates our God, given ability to see, and seek to keep God's people from stepping into supernatural realm. Ayaw niya yan. Ayaw niya mga anak ng Diyos mag-step in into the supernatural. The enemy knows that when we begin to see and hear in the spiritual realms, we will be empowered to manifest the kingdom of heaven on earth. Di ba yun ang sabi niya? Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So God is a true in being and we are created in this very image. Second John 4, 4, we do not see and hear more clearly from spiritual realm. It's because the God of this world has blinded our spiritual eyes. Paul recognized that our enemy has blinded our spiritual eyes. Look at the ministry of Moses. What is the ministry of Moses? He is a lawgiver. Tama? Anong sabi niya sa Deuteron Deuteronomy 29 to 6? Yet the Lord has not given you a heart to perceive and the eyes to see and ears to this very day. And I have led you for 40 years in the wilderness. Your clothes have not worn out on you and your sandals have not worn out on your feet. You have not eaten bread nor have you drunk wine or similar drink that you may know that I am the Lord your God. Diba? This is the problem of Moses with, with the Israelites. Kahit nakita na nila yung miracles na ginawa ni Lord sa kanila, there is a pillar of fire by night and a cloud, a pillar of cloud by day. Yung kanilang mga chinelas ay hindi napudpod, yung damit nila hindi nasira. Can you imagine that? And mana is raining from heaven. Hindi sila nagutom. But they don't believe. Why? Sabi ni Moses, The Lord has not given you a heart to perceive, and eyes to see, and ears to hear. Kaya understandable yan. Yung mga Old Testament people. Yung patriarchs natin. Kasi bulag sila. God is talking about their inability to see with the eyes of the heart to truly perceive and understand. Di ba? Kuminsan, pag binabasa natin ng Old Testament, one time you criticize these people, why they cannot believe God in spite of all these miracles? The very reason is this. Kung tayo din yung naan doon, ganun din ang gagawin natin. Why? Because 
we have we don't have a, a, an eyes to see in the midst of all the signs and wonders they had witnessed they still had no heart to perceive eyes to see and ear to hear that's why they call it signs and wonders they were seeing with natural eyes they only judge what is right and what is wrong yun lang ang nakikita niya kung anong tama at kung anong mali another man of god the mandate of isaiah he is a prophet and isaiah 6 verse 10 alala niyo ito the lord brought him into the council of heaven and he saw the seraphim flew to him at nilagyan siya ng live coal di ba nagbabagang uh, coal sa kanyang bibig palagay niyo mainit o hindi Mainit. Alam niyo bakit? Yung angel nga o oh, gumamit ng tongs. Hindi kinamay nung angel eh. Di ba? Gumamit siya ng tongs. Sibig sabi, mainit na mainit yun. Nilagay sa dila ni ano, uh, sa, sa bibig ni Isaiah. Okay? And we know the story. And then sabi niya, ng father, whom shall I send? And whom will go for us? So narinig ni Isaiah and he volunteered. Sabi niya, here I am, send me. And if you're going to read down, ang sabi pa ng, ng, ng Lord, O sige, Isaiah, I will send you. I will become, you will become a preacher to my people. Pero the more you preach, the more their eyes will be closed. Ibang klaseng ministry yan ha? Anong sabi ni Lord? He said, go and tell these people, keep on hearing but do not understand. Keep on seeing but do not perceive. Make the heart of these people dull. <laughs> Na-imagine nyo yung ministry na binigay ni Lord kay Isaiah. Preacher siya, prophet siya, but every time he prophesied, he preached, the eyes close and the ears close. Kaya, and, sabi, and their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and return and be healed. So, what God is saying here is this, I am sending you to preach my word, but when you do that, they are not going to receive it. Why? Because their eyes is closed. Their ears are closed also. They already made up their mind to my word being all about right and wrong. Kasi ang akala ng mga Israelita, ang word of God ay kung ano lang yung tama, kung ano lang yung mali. Kaya pag binasa nyo pa sa baba, sabi niya, I'm sending you as a witness. Your preaching will close up their ears even more. Kaya sa parte ng ibaba ng chapter 6, nagtanong si Lord, Si Isaiah kay Lord, sabi niya, Lord, hanggang kailan? Why? Because their hearts are hardened and they are locked into using the eyes that judge what is right and what is wrong. Our value system is based on sin and the righteousness of our actions. Ang value kasi ng tao is what is right and what is wrong love. Because the eyes of our mind are open to doing what is good and refraining from doing wrong. Yun lang yung alam natin. Doing good and refraining from doing uh, wrong. That's why Isaiah asked the Lord, How long, O Lord? Hanggang kailan? Let's go to the ministry of Jesus in the New Testament. Ano ang sabi niya? Therefore, I speak in parables. Because seeing, they do not see. And hearing, they do not hear. Nor they understand. And in them, the prophecy of his eyes fulfilled which says, Hearing, you will hear and shall not understand. And seeing, you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of these people have grown dull. 
same true in the time of Jesus, ang mga kausap ni Jesus ay ano, sarado din yung mga mata. That's why he quoted the scripture of the prophecy of Isaiah. Their ears are hard of hearing. Their eyes they have closed. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears. Lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal him. Should show so that I should heal them. You see, the healing comes to a person when he start to see and hear God. Mm. Matthew 13, Blessed are your eyes for they see, and your ears for they hear. For assuredly I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see, and did not see it, and to hear what you hear, and did not hear it. So during the time of Jesus, ministry here on earth, ang bukas lang na mata, ay yung mga disciple niya. We are living in the same day as Isaiah and in the same day of Jesus. Kaya kahit anong sigaw mo, kung sarado yung kanilang mga tenga at mga mata, they cannot see. The hearts of the people are still dull. Because the eyes of the heart had become closed, and the eyes of the knowledge of right and wrong are open. Kaya nga kinakailang maborn again ang isang tao. We are deceived because we believe that the knowledge of good is a godly thing. Don't you know that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, Adam and Eve was tempted not by the evil side of the tree. They were tempted by the good side of the tree. That's why not all good are gods. Not all good are gods. No, no, ano po? Not all good are gods. That's why you have to discern. Something is good is not necessarily God. That's why anong ministry ni Jesus? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. The captive that is referring here is spiritual, not only the one that is in the prison cell. And recovery of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So how did Jesus choose the 12 disciples? He prayed overnight. He was able to see their hearts that are open to receive the love of the Father. Our eyes had been opened to right and wrong, and we have lived our Christian life based on that evaluation only. And God wants us to live above right and wrong. Because there is a new law, Romans chapter 8, the law of spirit and life. The so-called Christian conflict are founded and energized by perspective of right and wrong, good and evil. Alam niyo ba, yung mga conflict, conflict sa mga organisasyon, sa pamilya, sa anuman yan, it is always energized by perspective of right and wrong. Sa atin, hindi mahalaga kung sino ang tama at sinong mali. Ang mahalaga, mahal kita. Last, the ministry of Paul. The same. Anong ministry ni Paul? Acts 26. While thus occupied, I was journeyed to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest at midday. O king, along the road, I saw light from heaven. He's making a testimony. Brighter than the sun, shining around those who journey with me. And when we all had fallen to the ground, I heard a voice speaking to me and saying in Hebrew language. See? Paul heard the voice of God. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It's hard for you to kick against the goats. So I said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. But rise and stand on your feet. For I appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister, a witness of both of these things which you have seen, and of the things which I will yet reveal to you. See, what is the ministry of Paul? 
is to be a witness of what he have been, what he have seen. Ano yung nakita niya? Ganun tayo, kaya tayo na born again. Gagawin niya tayong witness ng mga ipapakita, nakita natin at ipapakita sa atin ng Diyos. I will deliver you from the Jewish people, then sabi niya, as well as from the Gentile to whom now I send you. See? Alam natin yun that Paul was an apostle to the Gentiles. Ano daw trabaho niya? To open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. So his ministry is about opening the eyes of the heart so that the people could perceive the real truth. That is the ministry of Paul. The ministry of Jesus. The ministry of Moses. The ministry of Isaiah. The passage means if the eyes of the heart are not open and if you are just living by the eyes of the mind, you are still walking in Satan's way. Because you don't understand the ways of God. Living by the eyes that see and wrong is Satan's way of living. Kaya sabi niya, go to these people and say, hearing you will hear and shall not understand. So, pinag-quote na naman niya yung sinabi na Isaiah. Sinabi ni Lord kay Isaiah, and seeing you will see and not perceive, for the hearts of these people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing and their eyes and they have closed lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. So from Moses to Isaiah, from Isaiah to Jesus, and then through Paul, the issue of all ministry is about the opening the eyes of the heart. It is not about teaching precept, laws, doctrine, principles. But the goal is to open the eyes of the heart that had been blinded. That's why every time I preach, my motivation is that their eyes will be open. Kahit paanong ganda nung sinabi ko, kahit ba nung ka-eloquent yung pagkakadeliver ko nung preaching, if their eyes are not open, Sayang lang. The knowledge of good and evil originate from Satan's corrupted wisdom, which aspired to become like God. When it comes to practical issues of life, we have to make choices between right and wrong. Diba? Dito sa Dabao, meron ditong no jaywalking dito eh. Meron speed limit. So, eh, halimbawa, nag-speed, overspeeding ako. Yung 40, naging 80, di hinuli ako. Di sasabihin ko, ay, I'm not living in what is right and what is wrong. No. In the practical issues of life, we ch make choices between right and wrong. But in relating to God, our walk with Him, right and wrong have nothing to do with it. Yun po ang kaibahan. In the physical life, in the practical life, you should know what is right and wrong. Di ba? Oh, di ba? Meron niya mga nakasulat sa pader. Bawal ang umihi. Oh, di ba? Pag dumaan ka, you know, mapanghi siya. Oh. Kung kailan na may, may notice, tsaka nila binabiolate. But in relating to God, right and wrong have nothing to do with it. Okay? The issue of ministry since the Garden of Eden is that the eyes of our hearts be enlightened. Kasi kahit maraming alam ang utak mo, pag yung puso mo, hindi naka-align kay Lord, it's nothing. Every minister of the gospel would have their mandate to open the eyes that have become blinded. The eyes of the heart. Yun ang ating issue. Yun ang ating trabaho.
every time I stand and preach, always my objective, my goal at the end is that their eyes will be open. Kasi pag nabuksan ang mata nila, magsawa na sila. Magsawa sila sa revelation ni Lord. I don't need to tell them one by one kung ano ang dapat nilang gawin. The more open your heart becomes, the more of God you will see. And the more you will hear, and the more you will be healed. Yan po ang mangyayari. Warning to all of us. If you stop enjoying the intimate relationship, your heart, intimate relationship, your heart will begin to close. Yan po ang delikado. Because ambitions will replace it. Dreams, productivity, goals, and strategy will become your focus. Then the heart of your heart will start to close. It is normal for us to be seeing with the wrong eyes. Tandaan niyo po. It's normal. Because for all of our life, lumaki tayo na ang ginagamit natin ay yung ating natural eyes lang. Or the eyes of the mind. It is normal for us to have the eyes of our hearts blinded and not functioning. Normal yan. Ngayon naintindihan nyo na, you can now ask the Lord to open your eyes. The eyes that see right and wrong are actually not a valid eye for Christianity. Revelation is the opening of the eyes of the heart to see how God see and, in, and enable people to see who God truly is. So the tree of life is the true foundation of our walk with God. Not the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So the opening of the eyes of the heart is the only way to know Him. For He is only known by revelation. There is no other way you can know God. You cannot know Him by your soul. You cannot know Him by your mind. It is only by the Spirit that is inside of you. So how do we know whether the eyes of our heart are open. Ask yourself, do you like what you're hearing now? Gusto nyo ba itong naririnig nyo? Do you agree with what I'm saying? If you like this, it is your heart that likes it. It is your heart that likes it, not your mind. Don't worry about how wide your eyes are open. Don't worry. Kahit maliit lang. Importante bukas. Nalala nyo? Sabi namang in-check. Sabi, ang in-check daw. Liit mata, pero laki kita. Hmm. So do you know that God has no interest whatsoever in sin? There's no interest. His only occupation with sin is to get rid of it. It is not about right and wrong. It is about having our eyes of the heart open. Yun ang interest ni Lord. Yung heart mo mabuksan. I will pray and then after the prayer you can ask question. Uh, place your hand on your chest and say this prayer. Sabi niya po, I am a seer. I am created in God's very image. I am good. I am supposed to see into God and I am supposed to see into God's spiritual kingdom. That privilege is my spiritual inheritance through the finished work of Jesus Christ. Father of glory has given me an inheritance, and I am the Father's inheritance. I am created in His image to be a seer. Lord, thank you for opening up my spiritual eyes to see. Amen. Amen. Magdanong.
So, ibig sabihin, Pastor, our 